Where we're staying right now is about 30 miles north northwest of Phoenix, Arizona. And the great thing about this spot is that it's about five miles from the nearest actual road. And then that intersection is about five miles from the nearest highway. So we're actually pretty far out. And what that means is that the nearest camper is about a quarter mile away from us right now and even that is because it's the weekend during the week we are basically the only people out here what's neat about this part of the desert is that it is so lush there is green everywhere the palo verde grow to be the size of small trees there are bushes and cacti everywhere and the best part is that the ground is covered with weeds and grasses so it really keeps that sand down so when the wind kicks up like on a day like today the dirt and dust doesn't blow around at all but this is the type of site that Jenny and I dream about. It is basically open desert in every direction that you look. And even though it was kind of a pain to get back here, it was so worth it. Now we love this campsite, but one thing David didn't mention is that we have donkey neighbors. They are so cute. <laughs> they have even come close enough to our RV. We can see them out the back window and we love listening to them hee-hawing and making crazy donkey noises off in the distance, sometimes really close even. But donkeys aren't just a good thing here. We have bad things here too. And that would be, there's a lot of choya here. Sweetie has gotten her paw stuck in it a couple times already. David has gotten choya stuck in his hand from trying to pull it out of Sweetie's paw. It's a big hassle. And then another bad thing about here is that we're currently in season for things to start blooming. So we have these beautiful purple flowers that every morning are bloomed all around in this grass. The creosote, everything, everything's blooming. <laughs> My allergies are going crazy. But <laughs> you may notice we're actually in a different campsite than we were in last week's video where we mentioned that we uh, changed our blinds out. Now, the reason for that will go into detail in next week's video, so be sure to check that one out. But long story short, basically someone stole something from us. We didn't like being so close to them, so we decided to drive off farther into the desert and get farther away from them so that we didn't have to be by them anymore. But again, we'll get into more detail about that in next week's video, and today we're gonna go ahead and have a ton of fun. And Sweetie gets to come with us too. may have noticed that I got my hair cut. <laughs> it's just a pixie cut. So far I love it. It's been great. Really easy to deal with. Now if you didn't know that I got a pixie cut it's probably because you didn't come to the live stream. Our live streams are every second Monday of the month. We have a public live stream and then we have a patrons only live stream right afterwards. Now at our live streams we announce new things that we've done. We show updates to the trailer that we haven't shown yet. We show things like you know new haircuts and other style changes along with talking about what was stolen from us. So, if you want all that information ahead of time before the videos come out, which can come out two to three weeks late, then you know, come to our live streams. We have a lot of fun. But, <laughs> onto the trail, we are doing the Butcher Jones Trail. It's at the Saguaro Lake Recreation Area, which is gorgeous, by the way. They are people that have a volleyball court set up, people are kayaking and playing in the water and having picnics. It's beautiful here. There aren't any dogs allowed on the beach, but dogs are allowed on the trail. I believe the trail is about five miles in and out, rated as easy, and we should see beautiful views of Saguaro Lake. So let's get to it.
Sweetie just laid down in the middle of the trail. So I'm taking that as a hint that she's thirsty. Uh, she's definitely not hungry. So we're going to give her a little bit of water. I know, I know, hang on, hang on. Okay. Ah. I know, you are definitely thirsty, huh? Now we're taking just the small break to give Sweetie water. And I think I would reapply my sunscreen, but I don't think I need it yet. We're not that far in. But unlike the last trail we did, which was Sarah's crack. Whoa, well, excuse you. <laughs> I forgot to put on sunscreen because I'm an idiot. I didn't. David didn't, he did not get burnt. I got very burnt though. So this time, not on, <laughs> you all right? Not only did we remember to both put on sunscreen, but we brought it with us too. So we're good. We're gonna reapply at the end of the trail though. halfway point here at this gorgeous overlook. So we're gonna go ahead and stop and have our lunch. And we even brought lunch for Sweetie too. Hi, Sweetie. Yeah. Yeah. I know, what's in here? So far this trail has been incredibly easy. Not difficult at all. We've had a tiny bit of shade here and there. Sit. And we've loved it so far. Sweetie seems a little pooped, but she needs her exercise. Let's eat some lunch. about where we are. I'm assuming they get a lot of rain, but the cacti here are really big. I mean, some of the choya, like they practically look like miniature trees. They're so big, but there are so many different kinds of cacti around here. We found a barrel cactus, um, hedgehog cactus, saguaro, multiple different kinds of uh, choya. There's palo verde. Prickly pears. Prickly pears, oh my gosh, they're so, many different kinds, um, which kind of makes me question whether or not it was actually a good idea to bring Sweetie on this trail, considering since she's already got a butt sticker from sitting down. But so far so good. I don't think it's, you know, that big of a deal. If you do end up bringing your pets on this trail too, just know that there are a lot of cacti around. Just be really wary of that. But man, I didn't know this hike was gonna be so beautiful. The trail on this hike follows around the shoreline of Saguaro Lake and 
every turn you take, there's just a brand new beautiful view. The cliff faces around here are just gorgeous and so green. Like I said, this is like the greenest desert we've ever been in. <laughs> I have thoroughly been enjoying this hike. Sweetie's been enjoying this hike and it's not that difficult either. So I, I highly recommend this hike so far. It's a little long, but definitely doable. Oh, and I forgot to mention, almost all of the cacti around here are getting ready to bloom. Last year when we were in the desert, we left before everything started flowering and blooming. And right now it's looking like everything should bloom within two to three weeks and we should still be in the desert around that time and we are so excited we have never seen them bloom before i bet they bloom within the week you think so yeah oh i they hope are so so close some of them are really long they look like just any day they're gonna just start flowering it's gorgeous i'm so excited The second half of the trail moves away from the shoreline of Saguaro Lake and cuts through the land to get to the end, which is here. It looks right out over Burrow Cove and the view is just magnificent. You've got the four peaks straight out from this viewpoint and one of them, Brown Peak, is actually the highest point of elevation in, uh, what's the county we're in? I, Maricopa? Yeah, I think it's Maricopa. I think it's Maricopa County, yeah. It's uh, whatever county Phoenix, Arizona is in. But they're actually snow-capped. The elevation, I believe, is 7,600 feet, which is actually a kind of a good little uh, thing for us to go by of what elevation to stay out of. Because I know Flagstaff, Arizona, is still about 7,000 feet. We're thinking about going there next, but after seeing that snow yeah, up there. I don't think it's gonna be No, I think there. we're gonna be staying <laughs> away from Flagstaff, Arizona, stay away from the cold. But this trail was really neat. We were supposed to see, well, I mean, they say that you can see, I guess I should say, a bunch of wildlife on the trail here. So wild horses, scorpions, snakes, uh, Gila monsters, which I don't know what that is, but it sounds awesome. I think it's a giant lizard of some sort, I don't know. We did see a scorpion at our campsite though, and that was kind of terrifying. <laughs> it was so small that it was like the size of a quarter, but still a scorpion. Yeah, first one we've first ever one, seen. Yeah, so we were like, whoa, scorpion, look, 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 look. I was like yelling for Jenny. It was cool, it was pretty cool, but you know, I'd be okay if they uh, stay away. Yeah. But this trail we had to, uh, there is a $8 um, pass that you have to get. They sell them at just a ton of retail places all over the Phoenix area. It's just an $8 day use fee for the recreation area and for this trail. And I think a lot of trails in the Tonto National Forest require that too. Especially if you're gonna be using like a recreation site to get in the water or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Or if you're gonna use a recreation site to go on a trail. Um, I know that there are certain hikes that don't require it, but I don't know what they are, so I apologize <laughs> about that. But we have loved this hike, even if it did cost us $8 to um, hike on it with Sweetie. And we really enjoyed taking Sweetie on this hike. We don't typically bring Sweetie on hikes in the desert, but we really liked it. This was an easy, it was rated easy and it was easy trail. And so we brought Sweetie with us. You may notice that we didn't bring Alice, even though she's, you know, Alice the Adventure Cat. Yeah. <laughs> but the reason we didn't bring Alice is because David has the drone backpack, I have the camelback, and one of us is always toting the cameras and or Sweetie. 
So in order to make it so it's not so difficult or not so frustrating to hike, we just took only Sweetie. Um, she's really good at hiking yeah. on easy trails, even if they're a little longer, so we figured this would be the best one for her. And Alice, the next trail we're doing in the Tonto National Forest is going to be a moderately rated hike. Yeah. And since Alice is small, I can toss her in my backpack. <laughs> so. Yes. so if there's any kind of scramble, we don't have to worry about lifting Sweetie up, which we do sometimes, but you know, if we've both got cameras in our hands and stuff, it can be a pain. Alice is much more suited for those types of hikes than Sweetie. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and do a moderate hike with Alice next time. And I don't know, maybe someday we'll be able to do them both at the same time once Alice gets a little better at hiking on the trail. But I do have to note that the reason we don't typically bring Sweetie on trails like this, especially ones in the desert, is because of the cacti all around. Um, Choya especially drop their needles mm -hmm. and like little segments all over and they blow around in the wind like that's how they reproduce and so there are little choya segments kind of all over the place and we've always been really worried about sweetie getting one in her paw oh yeah so we always try and avoid taking her on desert hikes like this she's done all right you know except for the one in her butt now we've had really good luck hiking with sweetie on this trail so far no stickers in the paw i mean we have a whole two and a half miles to hike back <laughs> you know except for the one that got in her butt but i don't think that actually got in her butt. I think it was just in her fur. But we are going to enjoy this view now before we hike back. The sun is getting ready to set soon. So we're going to enjoy the view and then hurry up and hike the two and a half miles back and head home. We finally made it back to the trailer. We left the Tonto National Forest at about 6.30 and it's just after nine o'clock now. Our campsite is so far away. It's on the complete opposite side of Phoenix. And the story behind that is I had a couple sites picked out in or around the Tonto National Forest when we came to this area, but they were either full or we had no signal. So we unfortunately had to find a campsite out this way, which is perfectly fine because we love it here. <laughs> it was an awesome thing that we took Sweetie on this hike. Not only has she not been on a hike in quite a long time, but I think she was a bit out of shape because she kind of seemed like she wasn't feeling it. But we got home and she's completely pooped out in her bed now. And now that we are home, David is cooking us up a delicious dinner of ground beef tacos. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a, uh, it's so, it's just so easy. You just cook up some ground beef, throw it in a tortilla shell, toss on some cheese and an avocado and some salsa and you're done, so. This is an easy and very filling meal because, I mean, we're pooped too and it's late, but so hungry. So very hungry. So now that we're home and we're going to eat dinner, we're actually going to eat dinner in bed, which is not normal for us. But the reason being is David promised me that if I could get my hands on the Harry Potter series, he would watch them with me. I think he's only read the first two books and he hasn't seen any of the movies. And I've only watched the first four movies and read the first three books. So needless to say, David and I both haven't even seen or read the entire series. And our friends Jeff and Lori were very, very nice and sent me an early birthday present of the entire Harry Potter series. So David has decided to keep his promise and we're going to go ahead and watch the second movie while eating dinner. So we'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Was this happening behind me the whole time? What is this? What is this? What is this? Look at 